Hello everyone. I am here with Jill Bonowitz, uh, owner of Meant to Be Home, B with two E's. <laughs> and we are going to talk today about home staging, the importance of it, Jill's experience and all the wonderful things that she can do for you, and how that ties into um, what I'm doing at Compass Realty. So, um, Welcome. Thank you for joining me and talking to everyone yeah. about home staging and Thank design. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. And hey, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about, so right now we're in a home that Jill has staged. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So we're in a property in Haddonfield right now. It was a rental property that then was listed for sale. So it was vacant once the renters moved out and my client hired us to bring in all the furniture, the accessories, the decor, to really bring the house to life. Um, really cute bungalow style house. Um, we tried to play up some of the charm of the house, beautiful fireplace behind us, um, and it's under contract. And a sweet woman is buying the house with her two kids, and she already actually reached out to me about buying some of the furniture. So. <laughs> Um, that's really exciting because now you know it went from a staging project to potentially a decorating project and um, we may even be helping her with her daughter's bedroom so good stuff and you so you get to like see sort of like all these stages of the property like it's like yes. a, the life of a property it is yeah. and it's so cool to see you know to we put a stage home together and we have kind of a buyer in mind and yeah. you know being in Haddonfield so close to the elementary school you know, the thought was that a young family would be buying the house. Mm -hmm. um, and we did some of the rooms as kids' rooms. We did the enclosed sunroom as sort of like a bonus playroom, craft space, thinking, you know, that the buyer is going to probably have school age children. And that's exactly the case. And, you know, the buyer told me that her daughters loved those rooms, of course, loved the yeah. sunroom. Um, so we really appealed to the kids on this one. Yeah. And it, you know, I think really helped sell the property. So you and I, Jill and I were just talking about this before we started the interview, that one of the things about staging isn't just about making the property look amazing, which she, she does, obviously, but it's about showing how the property can be used, showing yeah. that the bonus room could be for a kid's toy room, showing, yeah. yeah. And when some of those rooms that are sort of bonus spaces are empty, some buyers just really you know, don't have that vision. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you don't want them walking around the property confused about, oh, what will we do with this room? Or what would we do with this? You want them to see it staged and think, oh wow, I never thought we could use this as a playroom or this could be like a bonus office space or craft room. So it helps give them ideas as they're touring the home and visualize how their family might use the space. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, we did a lot of talking before we started this, and it was really good, so now I'm going to ask you to also. Yeah. So um, we were talking a little bit about how if you walk into a property and it's empty, it becomes more transactional, less emotional, but when you fill it with a feeling of home, it becomes more of an emotional can, like purchase. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when someone can walk in and visualize how their family would use the space and, you know, pictures the kid, you know, the kids running around the island and playing in a playroom that's been set up, all of a sudden it's an emotional purchase. And I think people are willing to spend more, um, you know, when there is that emotional connection. When a home is vacant, you know, it's, very hard again for them to visualize their life there and some people are really good at design and would immediately say oh i would put the sectional here and the tv there and this all makes sense mm -hmm. but not all buyers can do that so staging at least gives them kind of ideas yeah so that when they buy the home you know they can tweak it they can do exactly how it was set up staged um it just you know helps them it's like a pinterest board yeah you yeah, know yeah. in real life yeah yeah <laughs> I would, it'd be interesting to go back to the homes that you've staged and see exactly if, to see if the layouts were exactly the way you had them when they walked yeah. in. I know. Whenever I see a property relist it that we staged like a couple of years ago, I'm yeah. always so curious to see <laughs> what did they do with it. You know, is it the same way? Is it different? You know, because everyone has their own style and taste. But we try to use you know colors and accessories and things that would kind of work with a range of buyers. Yeah, you know, it's not. Yeah super modern, not super traditional. It's sort of in the middle and yeah. could go either way depending yeah, on style. Yeah. 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 So, um, 
one of the reasons that I'm talking to Jill and one of the ways that Jill works with Compass agents is uh, Compass offers a program called Concierge. And that allows um, sellers the opportunity to work with folks like Jill, I mean, contractors, um, plumbers, any way that we can make the home more appealing. Um, and it's no, there's no cost or fees or anything. It's all out of the equity of the home. And then that comes back to Compass when um, you actually sell the home. So it basically allows you to sell your home faster and for more money without spending any money out of pocket. So I will, I'll have a link to that when I post this video. I'll have a link in the post so you can check out more information about that on my, on my page. And um, so let's talk a little bit about maybe some do's and don'ts. So like you go to a property and you're like, um, no, this, what are some things that you see all the time that you're like, I would not do that or I would definitely do this? Yeah, my advice to homeowners looking to sell their property, if you're still living there, is you want your home to look like a magazine. Yeah. So all the extra stuff that yeah. everyday life needs to be boxed up and stored somewhere, you know, in a closet or tucked away because you want buyers to walk in and see the home and furnishings, but not your stuff. Yeah. You know, all the extra clutter and different things that, you know, we all use every day need to be tucked away. And that's why I think people love seeing a staged home because there isn't any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's all the beautiful, pretty stuff, but none of the everyday, especially in the kitchen, like clearing the counters, hiding the appliances underneath, you know, let them see and appreciate the finishes of the kitchen and not be bogged down with, oh wow, there's a million appliances on the counters, there's stuff all over the fridge. Like it just is distracting. Yeah, yeah. And you want them to see the property and not your stuff. So I think that's a really, um, really important tip. It kind of goes back to what you were saying a minute ago, allowing potential buyers to visualize themselves in a property versus visualizing you living there. Like they don't want to see the sellers living there. They want to no. see themselves living there. Exactly. Yeah. And like personal photos and things, although they're great to have in your home, they make your home more inviting and, and welcoming. You don't want, you know, buyers to be looking at your photos. You want right. them to think about how it can be their family photos. There. Right, right, right. So just, you know, replacing those. If you have like a whole wall of photos, take them down, you know, put a large scale mirror up or a couple pretty, you know, canvas pieces of art. You can get them really expensive, inexpensively, you know, at home goods and places like that, just to neutralize everything. And again, think about it in terms of flipping through a magazine. What do those rooms look like in a magazine? Mm -hmm. You don't see all that stuff and yeah. personal stuff. Yeah. You just see, you know, simple furniture, some decor, some accent pieces, but not, you know, all the extra clutter. So another, I'm looking at the color of these walls. And I'm thinking yeah. how nice it is. It's like a buttercream almost. Yeah, it's a really soft, like ivory color, yeah. and it's great because it goes with anything. Yeah. Um, so you can see, you know, we've got the gray clock up here. Look, look grays look great with a, a really neutral palette. We love to use blues. I I always try to use colors other than blue because <laughs> that's all we do. Uh -huh. But blue is just a color that appeals to the masses. You know, women like blue, men like blue. Um, I've really never met anyone that says I hate blue. True. Um, so we use blue a lot as like our pop of color. Um, you can't see it, but behind the camera is a blue sofa. <laughs> so <laughs> With some lovely really, blue pillows. We really <laughs> use a lot of blue. But neutral walls are really important. If your home you know, has really deep, saturated colored walls, that's something you want to do before you list your home. I mean, get a fresh coat of paint done, you know, buy a painter or yourself if you're handy and just pick a really light neutral color because buyers can always change that down the line, but yeah. you don't want them to walk through thinking already, wow, as soon as we move in, we're going to have to hire a painter and put all this money out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. You want to solve that problem for them and then they can live with it for a while and if they want to change it down the road, of course they can, but make it as neutral as possible. So let's just talk a little bit about what it would be like, because I'm thinking to myself, you don't even have to do all of this stuff. You can just hire Jill <laughs> or work with me and together we'll That's work right. with Jill. Um, so what, how, what's that process look like? Yeah, so I love the concierge program that you guys have because I don't know of any other brokerages that offer that where yeah. you guys will cover that upfront staging cost um, yeah. for the buyer. 
um, because you know while, while you're trying to sell your home you know you have a bunch of expenses hitting you and you're trying to purchase a new one most likely so it's always tough you know if the property is going to be vacant and you need to bring in all the staging you know how are you going to pay for that right. so that's why I love working with compass um, because you guys have a solution for that um, so we would do a walkthrough mm -hmm. of the property um, if it's going to be vacant, you know, I would give a plan for which rooms I think should be staged and it doesn't need to be every room. It's okay. key rooms, living, dining, kitchen, usually the uh, primary bedroom. Um, sometimes we don't even do the bedroom. It depends, you yeah. know, if there's a space challenge with it or something odd, we want to kind of show how it can be used, okay. but you don't always have to do the bedroom. But the main living areas I always recommend. Um, so once you know that's all agreed to and the plan is decided on then we just literally bring everything in and it takes us a day um, to put the whole house together um, and then the furnishings stay you know until you know you're under contract or whatever the agreement is yeah and then once it's good to go we move it all out and it's ready for the buyer so it's very little work yeah for the seller, the seller. yeah um, you know we handle all of it and we have a ton of inventory so I just met with someone this morning about a property in Morristown and we're probably gonna stage it on Friday so we can move that quick if our schedules open right right I, I hear Jill has a magical warehouse <laughs> south of here I have, I'll see it someday someday <laughs> when, I, when I get it together it's just we have stuff coming in and out so yeah. frequently that some days it's magically organized and great. Yeah. Um, right now we're waiting on a couple stages that were delayed with different things. So we have like piles and bins right. and yeah. everything kind of in disarray. But we have 2,800 square feet full of furniture. I can't even count how many pillows we have. It's a little bit out of control. I have a pillow obsession. Um, and we're kind of ready to go. So we have different styles and colors, tons of blue, like I said. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're ready to see a property and a couple days later, you know, fill the house with staging. Uh, where, where are your go-to stores? I'm just curious. Like I, in my head, I'm going to Home Goods. Yeah, Home Goods is a big one. Um, at Home in Cherry Hill mm -hmm. has a lot of in-stock furniture. So okay. if we're ever in a pinch and we're low on something and yeah. you know, we don't have it, um, that's a great place to get something quickly. Yeah. Um, Amazon, of course, I mean, can't beat their timelines. And then for decor, I absolutely am obsessed with Home on Haddon on King's Oh, Island. I love Home. I actually interviewed her. I love Kathy Home on Haddon. Kathy is amazing. Yes. Her, yes. The, she has the best taste. She has yeah. the most fabulous pillows and accessories. And her so, daughter and her dog also. Amazing. Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> I love them. I'm their yeah. biggest fan. So we do um, get some of our accessories from them. Mm -hmm. um, and then all different places. I love going to flea markets and like secondhand shops. Mm -hmm. That's where we find kind of all the cute little unique things like you know the vintage books yeah um there's some up there too um just unique things because i i get sick of the same old faux plant candle right you know, right like right. we try to mix it up so that there's interesting things and we're always kind of refreshing stuff yeah great yeah um well thank you is there anything else you would like to share about yourself or um no, 2020 oh. has been an interesting <laughs> yes, yes. year. So, yeah. you know, it, we were just I was meeting with uh, my staging assistant. We were going over all the not so fun stuff behind the scenes, you know, QuickBooks and all the receipts and all the fun stuff that I hate doing. And staging is really down for us in 2020. So we've been really busy, yeah. but less on the staging side, more on the design side. And I really feel that that's because inventory is so low right now. Yeah. So a lot of investors, builders, agents that would have pushed for staging, right now they're not doing it as much because they're seeing that it's you know, going anyway. It's going anyway, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that you know the tide changes on that. Um, yeah. We'll see what next year holds for us. Yeah. Um, you know, we still had a great business in 2020, but it was a different mix. Yeah. Last year's business was you know 80% staging, 20% design. This year, it's probably about like 50-50. Mm -hmm. So it's shifted, and we've kind of shifted with that in yeah. 2020. And we're, I'm curious to see what happens next year, and you know, if staging 
you know, really goes off the charts again for us, or if it stays where it is, you know, it's something I have to think about. And what's your region? You do shore properties? Yeah, so mostly South Jersey, Camden County, a little bit in um, Burlington County, like Morristown. And then we just started picking up a lot of business at the shore. Um, it, <laughs> yeah. it seems, you know, a lot of folks that, you know, were thinking about shore properties, but, you know, maybe we're putting it on a back burner. Mm -hmm. Now in 2020, we know a lot of clients that bought shore properties. And when you have a second home, it's kind of hard to, you know, design it and deal right. with all the furnishings right. and all that. Um, so it's been a great opportunity for us. We've done... We've completed three beach homes this year. We're just started two, and mm -hmm. then we have a new construction in Margate that we're going to be working on in like February, March. Nice. So I don't know. We, maybe we should be called Meant to Beach. <laughs> um, and we love doing shore projects because you can be really fun with the accessories and yeah, the decor. Yeah, yeah. We love using different pops of color, and that's perfect for the shore. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm interested to see how our business shifts and how COVID you know evolves hopefully it goes away yes, soon yes. um but it's you know been an interesting year um but a really great year and we've like worked with some of the best clients so it's been super rewarding well thank you for talking to me yeah thank if you if you want to learn more or see all of jill's amazing work you can find her on instagram it's meant to be with two e's home yeah um underscores between each of the word yeah um thank you so much uh, so I will repost this on Love South Jersey on Instagram and Facebook with a link about uh, Compass Concierge so you can learn more. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.